Welcome to lesson number three. We have a lot of grammar to go over today, so let's jump right into it. First up, we have some new vocabulary words. If you look at the first one, you will notice that in the romaji, there is also a hiragana character. It's one that you've already learned, so if it looks unfamiliar to you, then you need to go back and review lessons one and two. This word is yasai, which means vegetables. Now, there are actually two different ways to say fruits. The first one being here on the screen, kudamono, but you can also say the English word fruits using Japanese pronunciation, which would be furutsu. Moving on, we have two specific foods. First up, we have apple, which is ringo. Ringo. Then we have carrot, which is ninjin. Since we are following the Japanese from zero book, I do also have two more phrases here. So first up, we have eigo ga hanasemasu ka. Eigo means English. Then we have hanasemasu, which means can speak. Don't worry about the grammar here or how it's conjugated yet. Just know that hanasemas means can speak. Then we have the question particle. So it changes this whole sentence into a question. Can you speak English? This sentence can be used with any language. Just replace the word eigo with whatever language you want to ask about. For example, if you wanted to ask if they can speak Japanese, you would say, Nihongo ga hanasemasu ka? Can you speak Japanese? The second sentence is, Nihongo o binkyo shiteimasu. Nihongo is Japanese, the Japanese language specifically. Binkyo means study, and then shiteimasu is doing. So this sentence does not have a subject. Technically, it does. We just can't see it. Technically, the whole sentence would be Watashi wa nihongo o binkyo shiteimasu. But in Japanese, whenever the subject is obvious, we don't include it in the sentence. Very, very, very frequently, the subject is dropped. So that's what's happening here. So it is implied that I am studying Japanese. Okay, let's get straight into our new grammar. There are these very specific word sets in Japanese, and all of them follow the same pattern. They all have a ko, a so, an a, and a do. In all of them, regardless of which word set it is, the ko version is going to be close to the speaker, so is close to the listener, a is far away from both people, and do is going to be the question word of whatever the word set is. So for example, doko would be where, but dore is which, right? It's just going to depend on which word set it's a part of. I shrank my box a little bit so that if you wanted to take a screenshot of this page, you can do so. This is a very useful study reference for later because the koso, a, do words are a little tricky to master at first. Once you get it down, they're easy, um, but in the beginning, they can be a little bit confusing. So if you need to, take a picture of this, screenshot it, whatever, save it so that you can review it later. I had to switch over to this side because I was covering up part of the sentence on the other side. This ko so a do set is for this, that, that over there, and which. So kore, ko is close to the speaker. Kore is this, right? Close to me. So the first sentence we have here, the girl is holding an apple. She says, Kore wa ringo desu. This, close to me, is an apple. Okay? Sore means that, close to the listener. So we have this same girl right here. She's the one talking. Then we have her friend over here. She's the one that has the apple. Okay? Sore wa ringo desu. That is an apple. A is far away from both the speaker and the listener. So we have both of the girls are right here. 
And there's a boy over here with an apple mascot. So Ade is going to be that over there. So that far away. Um, this takes a little getting used to because we don't do that in English. We would just say that. But that's why it's implied that over there. That thing that's far away, that over there, that is an apple. Arewa, lingo des, that is an apple. Then, do is going to be the question of whatever word set it is. So, dore is which. Dore desu ka? Which one is it? I could add a subject to this. I could say, ringo wa dore desu ka? Which one is an apple? Now, we're going to learn your second particle. This one is wa. If you've already been studying hiragana, you might be confused because it looks exactly the same as ha. And that's because they are the same. Let's talk about why. So the character wa is usually pronounced ha, but it is changed to wa when it is used as a particle. There are actually a couple of other particles that do the same thing where they will have a different pronunciation when they're being used as a particle, but we'll talk about those when we get to them. Now, what you might notice is that some words like konnichiwa and also konbanwa, they have the character ha at the end, but it's pronounced wa. And the reason for that is because these are not technically words. They are abbreviations of, and over time, those sentences got shorter and shorter and shorter until we were left with a word. So, for example, the whole phrase of konnichiwa is actually konnichiwa go kigen ikaga desu ka? This sentence translates to how are you on this day? But again, over time, it just got shorter and shorter until we were left with this day. Konnichi means this day. And then wa is the subject marker. So konnichiwa literally means on this day. But in a normal word, it will always be ha. It's only wa when it is a particle or when it's part of one of these little abbreviated phrases. Now, what does wa do? Wa is the subject marker. It tells us the subject of the sentence. So we have the topic, wa, and then any question or details that are about the subject, right? Anything that is before the wa is the subject, okay? But here's the thing. Subjects in Japanese are often dropped. It'll get mentioned once, and then every other sentence that comes afterwards will not include the subject. It's considered redundant. And if you are constantly including the subject, you're going to be annoying to most people. So you don't want to do that. Like in English, we would say, I went to the store and I did this. And when I got done, I went home and I took a rest. They don't do that in Japanese. They say the subject one time and then they just list all of the things that are related to that subject. This is one reason why it can be kind of difficult to jump into a conversation halfway because if you miss the topic, you may not know what they're talking about because they're not going to bring the topic up again until the topic changes to something else. This is going to feel weird at first, especially if your first language is English, but with practice, it will become second nature. So don't worry about it too much. All right, let's practice. So we're going to start with a word that you're already familiar with. We've practiced with this now for two whole lessons. So you should know what this word is, right? What kind of animal is it? Nandeska. Inudes, right? These are all dogs, all of them. So let's practice using kore, sore, and are. Are you ready? We're going to do this from the boy's perspective, right? This boy here in blue. He is the one who's going to be answering all of our questions. So this dog is close to him. So what would he say? Take a minute, pause if you need to. Kore wa inudes. This next to me is a dog. This is a dog. Next up, 
何ですか They are far away from the boy. And they're far away from the girl. They're on the other side of the lake. 何ですか犬です。That over there is a dog. It's pointing at this dog here. That over there is a dog. Next up. Nandeska. It's close to the girl this time. それは犬です。That is a dog. That over there by her, by the girl, is a dog. This one is going to use your new vocabulary word. It's far away from both the boy and the girl, so how can we say? あれは人参です。That over there is a carrot. How about this one? The girl is holding it. So, what can we say? それは人参です。How about this carrot? It's close to the boy. これは人参です。This is a carrot. Take a moment and read it yourself first. Neko wa dore desu ka? What does this sentence mean? Neko wa. Neko is our subject, right? It's marked with the subject marker. Neko wa dore desu ka? Do is the question word. So, dore desu ka is which one? Which one is the cat? It's the first one. Let's try another one. Yasai wa dore desu ka? What is yasai?、Hmm. It's a new vocabulary word. What is it? Yasai. Yasai wa dore desu ka? Which ones? Are vegetables. We actually have two vegetables here. So we could say, Nin jin wa yasai desu. We can also say, This is a potato. Potato in Japanese is jagaimo. So, jagaimo wa yasai desu. We could also have both of them. We could say, Nin jin to jagaimo wa yasai desu. Carrots and potatoes are vegetables. Now, this one's more specific. It says, Ninjin wa dore desu ka? What does the sentence mean? What is it asking? Ninjin wa. Ninjin is our subject. Which one is a carrot? Which one is a carrot? Obviously, it's this one. Okay. Kore wa nan desu ka? Kore wa nan desu ka? これは果物です。Now, in general, the words kore, sore, and are are singular words. There is a way to make them plural to mean these or those. You just add ra to the end, kore ra or sore ra would mean these or those. You cannot do that with dore. There is no dore ra. That's not a thing. Dore is already plural, so there is no need for us to change it. But with kore, sore, and are, we can add ra to change it to these, those, or those over there. Sometimes kore and sore are used in plural sentences, but generally speaking, they are used for singular things only. So here, kore wa kudamano desu. Maybe I'm talking about the watermelon, right? This is a fruit. This watermelon is a fruit. Maybe I'm talking about the baby. Well, maybe I'm like confused and I'm like, Is this a baby? No, this is a fruit. So, just kind of a general rule of thumb there. If you want to make it plural, you can add it up. Kore da. You can also say all of these by adding zenbu. We can say kore zenbu, which means all of these, right? Sore zenbu, all of those. Anyway, moving on. Kore wa nan desu ka? 
、うん、これは野菜です。はい。Oh man, this looks like a man. Is it a man? これは何ですか ?What is this? Eh, these are vegetables. Don't worry about it. It's not a real face. これは何ですか Ah, this is a watermelon. But you don't know the word for watermelon. One of the important things to remember when you're studying a language say what you can say, not what you want to say. You want to say this is a watermelon. But if you only ever say what you want to say, you will never ever speak and you will never get better. You can't say this is a watermelon because you don't know the word watermelon. But you do know the word fruit, so you can say this is a fruit. これは果物です。This is a fruit. Over time, you'll get to a point where you can say what you want to say. But until then, it is better to speak as much as you can. With what words you already know. So you have to sometimes get creative and rephrase things in your head using the words that you already have in your vocabulary. Say what you can, not what you want. So, これは果物です This is a fruit. How about this one? これは何ですか We do know the word for this. We can still say that this is a fruit, but we do know the word for apple. So, how can we say that this is an apple? What do you think? これはリンゴです。It's an apple watch. Do you like it? Fresh off the, the market. It's the, it's the newest model, Apple, apple watch here. We have some new Hiragana characters. Today we're going to practice all of the characters from the K column. The K in Japanese makes the same sound as it does in English. Most of the Japanese sounds are made by taking one of the vowels that we learned in the first lesson and we practiced again in the second lesson. It takes one of those vowels and then pairs it with a consonant. So, in order, we have ka, ki, ku, ke. Ko, ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. I personally think that the K characters are easier to remember than some of the other ones because they have some really obvious pictographs.、Uh, this first one, it literally looks like how it's spelled. Like this is a K, right? This is a letter A, ka. Right? The only thing it's missing is like a line here. Right? There it is. There it is. Ka. Ka. So, like, you can actually see the sound in the way that it looks. Ka.、Uh, ki looks like a ki <laughs> for your door, right? Or your car, maybe. Car ki.、Uh, ku looks like a bird's mouth, and he's going ku, ku, ku. Ke looks like a kettle, kettle for tea. Ko is the only one that's maybe a little bit. Difficult, you have to kind of use your imagination, but it looks like a can of Coke. Coke. And once again, if you have your notebook ready, let's practice writing it.、Um, if you have the textbook, you can practice writing it there instead. So, this one is tricky because you're going to be very tempted to do this line first.、Uh, you should not. That is not the first stroke. Your first stroke is this one. You got to come around, come down, kick it up. Um, why is that important? Well, with this particular character, it's not, but it's good habit to start following stroke order early because it will help you when you write kanji later. Because some kanji, if you don't write it in the right stroke order, it will make it really difficult to get all of the elements to fit together. And in some cases, it can actually make the character incorrect because the direction of your stroke. Will look different than what it's supposed to, and it could cause it to turn into a different character altogether.、Um, we will learn more about that later, but for now, practice doing the stroke orders in the correct order because it will help you later. So don't do two first, do one first. Come across, come down, then come back, add your stroke down, and give your little here's your A, right? So One more time, come over, come down, kick up. Bring down your line, 
as your stand. Cop. Key has the most strokes that we've seen so far. It has four, but they're pretty easy, no big deal. So we have first, we have these two lines. It is important to notice, if you look here at the dotted line, you can see that these lines are not straight. They are not horizontal. They are at an angle, an ever so slight angle. That is important. Okay, then bring this down and come up. Now, here's where things are weird <laughs> because technically um, you don't have to break this. You can, you don't have to. Um, generally speaking, from what I've noticed, when people write, they tend to skip it and like they'll, they'll leave an opening here and then they'll come at this part. Um, but you don't have to add it like that. There is another way to do this. Um, you can do it like this. Add your lines, bring it down. And instead of letting go, you do it together. You just make a circle. So key, um, and there's, there's a couple of other characters that do similar things that have a circle at the end. And sometimes the circle will be broken and sometimes it will be one stroke. It's just kind of a handwriting preference. Um, some people think that this is easier, so that's how they do it. Personally, I can never make mine look right when I do it this way. I, I feel like it looks really ugly when I try. I don't know. It doesn't look right to me when I do that. Um, so I always connect it. I always leave the circle. Um, it's the same thing as, you know, some people write letter K like this and some people write letter K like this. Same thing. It's just a handwriting thing. Ku is the easiest character, not only to remember, but also to write. You just pew, pew. It's just a sideways V, pretty much. So, uh, make it nice and big and wide. Don't make it too skinny. There you go. There's Ku. Next up, we have Kit. This one, you gotta come down, flick it up, bring your arms across, then come down. Remember, don't do three before two. You must do them in the right order. So bring your bottom down, come over here, add your line. Ket, ket, kettle, or keg. And finally, we have ko. Ka, ki, ku, ke. Cool. So this one has kind of a funny little stroke here. And this one comes down like that. So again, flip it around. Add your bottom. Looks like a, a can of Coke if you if you squint your eyes. It looks like a can of Coke. <laughs> now let's talk about the duck tin. A duck tin is a small symbol placed to the upper right of a kana to alter the pronunciation. Since we just learned the K kanas, that's the one that we're going to focus on this time. So if we add a duck tin to a K consonant, it's going to change that K to a G. So now instead of it being ka ki ku ke ko, now it's ga gi gu ge go ga gi gu ge go it's very important especially with this one that your little duck then is not the same size as his arm it almost looks like a quotation mark it's really small and it's just at the top corner here you can see it's in about the same spot on all of them now you technically know 15 kana, right? You got the five vowels, the five K sounds, and then the five G sounds once we add a duct in. So look at these words and see if you can read them. Try to read them by yourself. It doesn't matter if you don't know what it means. Just practice reading them. Pause the video. I'm going to go over all of them in just a second. Ready? First up, we have aki, which means autumn. Then we have kiku, kiku, which is listen. Ow, ow, blue. Gogo, gogo, afternoon. Kagi, kagi is key. Then the last one, kaku. Kaku is right. All right.
right, we are all done with this lesson. This is your homework for next time. Take a minute, take a picture, and review it before you move on to the next lesson. All right, it's time to say so long. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.